Hey there, YouTube world. My name is Matt Schwartz. I'm the Welding Geek. This is my brother, Mike. Mike. And he's going to paint this helmet for me. That's and right. he's, we're going to show you how to do it. So if you want to see that, stay tuned to the video. All right, so what we got here first is the Black Series prototype of a fed helmet. You guys asked, you wanted to see how I was going to go ahead and paint the death watch style helmet. So here we are, I got my brother with me who's actually gonna do the detail painting. Not, I'm just not rattle canning this. We're gonna, he's got the airbrush. So we're gonna do some fancy crap. So he's here with me. Say hi, Mike. How you doing? This is Mike Schwartz, <laughs> the other welding geek almost. No. <laughs> so the first thing he did here was take a scotch bright uh, pad and he has scotch brighted this whole helmet. He's gonna take Windex and clean it and then we're gonna take this, basically a flat, like a primer. We're just gonna prime it in black and then we'll come back to the next step. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Yep. We'll get that done and then we'll show you what the next step is. Yep, let's do it. All right, I figured I'd get some video here. I'm being actually behind the camera this time. And Mike is just masking off the T-visor. Just trying to make sure we don't get a bunch of paint blowing out into where you're gonna be looking out of the helmet. Oh, what kind of tape are you using? I'm using a 3M, like a, actually I'm wrong, it's a Scotch uh, automotive tape you can pick up at like Napa. This is just to help get in the small spaces instead of using an inch and a half or two inch roll. Um, we've got a bunch of different widths of this and so we're just going to go in and mask off or Mike's going to go in and mask off I should say. So I just want to clarify some stuff here too with this type of helmet you're going to get a whole bunch of spray paint and airbrush paint down inside here and what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up messing up where you're looking out of your visor so paint no matter what is creepy and it'll shoot around corners and stuff if you're not careful so we're just trying to be double careful here on our details all right so this is what we've got taped so far you're just trying to get it down in that crack. I mean, no big thing. And then we've also taped, Mike has taped the little button. So that's all that we have taped the masking at this point in time. So we're going to go shoot yep. the flat black and then we will be back. All right. So we have our helmet primed in the flat black. Um, and so the next process is which color? So we're going to be doing um, this. Uh, satin Lagoon. Basically going to base coat the whole helmet in a Satin Lagoon. I know he said no rattle can, that's not true. We do all our base colors in rattle can and then we're going to come back and do a ton of detail in airbrush. Um, so basically whole helmet will end up in the Satin Lagoon color. I'm going to mask off um, the T, basically going to mask off so just the T visor area. So that this pattern that comes around what I call like the mandibles or teeth are visible and we're going to hit with this um, wildflower blue. These are just spray paint you get at Menards or Home Depot. Um, and then once that's done, peel it back. And then I'm going to end up masking out the cheeks. And we'll do this uh, satin oasis blue on the inside of the cheeks. Uh, and a few more steps and there will be a couple more color details in here uh, as we get further in. Just to get the base colors down. Um, then after that, we get into the real nitty gritty of Deets. dirt and funness. Hi. Cool. I'm go ahead, get set up, do that, get the paint on, and then we'll come back and show you what we achieved. Okay, we got the Satin Lagoon. Satin Lagoon on, or Mike got the Satin Lagoon on. Satin Lagoon. He's using a heat gun to flash it so it make the process go a little quicker. Yep. At least at this stage, I'm not sure you can do that later or not. Yeah, I'll be using it all the time. So, okay. yeah, when using a heat gun, don't ever leave it on one spot. You'll boil your paint and make it look all bubbly. Um, but just drying it out keeps it, you know, we did this about. 10 minutes ago, spray paint, and I'm already able to grab and touch it, which is really nice. Um, next process will be a, a tape off and mask, uh, and then we'll land down this, this lavender color, this wildflower blue, to get all the cool little, we'll start with that T-visor area. Um, step by step, it'll go. So what, be what are you gonna tape? So I'm gonna end up taping the dome off all along the top here, so we wanna protect the dome, so I'll probably use some newspaper or whatever paper I got around here um, to basically make a, cone that will protect this. Uh, we'll do the same for the for the back area here. I'll tape off here and here. 
So there'll be paper here and it'll only leave this band exposed. Um, and even this, we're gonna we'll cover that up and do a detail later. Um, and then we'll come in on the cheeks and I'll actually tape around here. So all we're getting is that band and this front mandible area that'll be exposed for paint. Um, and then uh, we'll do, do the next couple of steps like that. All right, cool. Let's do it. I'll get right. video of what we did masked just so you can visually see it. So let's, let's get it masked off. So I found some brown paper to mask with. He is just going around the top edge here, masking out the dome, making it a cone head. These sharp lines where the paint is separate. See that skillet tree right there? <laughs> the guy that drew it is right there. Shameless self-promotion, right? If we're dropping names, I work in a motorcycle shop and uh, learn a lot of this stuff from there. Custom painted vehicles for those of you guys who want to have sweet paint jobs on your motorcycles. Check us out. What's it called? Custom Painted Vehicles. You can go to custompaintedvehicles.com. Check out our gallery or our Instagram. Custom Painted Vehicles on Instagram. Uh, we do some pretty sweet stuff. Masking. Complete. I guess we did not need to mask that off. So because we've got two separate colors here, doesn't matter what paint I put on the front, I'm just gonna be painting this area and any overspray I'm gonna end up covering with another mask later. So it's not gonna actually end up being a problem. And what color are we gonna go? Uh, we are gonna do this. The next color is gonna be wildflower blue. All right, let's All right. do it. Sounds good. Cool. I've discovered that through Mr. Adam Savage, I tested that this aluminum foil tape is awesome for making things look metallic. What I'm gonna use it for is uh, this stock right here is already painted metallic, but it doesn't really have a, a good base in reality. Like the eye will always pull it out as that's a fake. So like when you're wearing this helmet, you know, out there from, you know, 10 feet away, people are gonna pick up that it doesn't look right. Something's not right about it. And in this paint job, this is actually gonna get painted black, like a matte black. What I'll end up doing is, because it's matte black, I can paint it matte black, I can take a little scuff pad and I can scuff it and this metal will show through and it'll bring it into uh, reality instead of it making it feel like it's fake. So that's what we're doing right here. Just trying to install some reality to our fun costume. What are you using? Uh, this is a... Uh, I know, some kind of tape. like aluminum tape. You get it at a hardware store for doing duct work or uh, I don't know. That's all I know to use it for. Duct work and costumes. <laughs> all right. Day number two. What day do you, two. You want to explain what you got accomplished here? Yeah, so day two, um, I guess the, uh, what I got going on here is I got all the, we had gotten the, um, the wildflower paint down and I want to mask that off so I can put black down on the cheek here. Uh, so I ran some uh, tape, some quarter inch tape up the, uh, the cheek area, this right here, uh, and then run it in the inside of the cheek. So this is for a detail that's on this helmet. There's actually kind of like a um, that wildflower color in the, the black of the cheek. So this will end up being a reveal because we'll end up doing black here. I'll we'll end up doing a, a lighter a much brighter blue, a teal here, and then at the end we'll peel this off and you'll have that dual tone uh, going on right here in the cheek. Um, so mask that off both sides, and I'm just going to spray black in here, and then we're going to mask that off and spray the light blue, and then we'll do a big reveal, 
and then it's the fun stuff. So yeah, you just want to mask a nice clean line around there, and like he said, it's a quarter inch strip to have this color underneath there. Correct? Yep. Uh, so we did our next step. Put the black in. Notice I didn't really care about the overspray on this because then we're going to mask this. And then I'm going to paint a light blue here. Um, I kind of pre prepped some masking tape on the back of some just scrap paper or newspaper, whatever you got at home. And sometimes I like to detack it a little bit because if you've got fresh paint, sometimes you'll get a little pull away. So this was a little test I did to see if the tape was ready and see how it pulled the paint off. Uh, but we should be good now. And if not, uh, we get to fix it later in detail. How'd you detack the tape? Uh, so to detack tape, you can just run into wrong, like running your shirt, the fuzz from your shirt will, or pants, jeans, whatever you've got. Um, even just taking it on your, your, your bench and putting it on the bench, you'll pick up dust particulates and it just, it pulls the tack out of the tape a little bit. So it's not as highly aggressive. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this helmet off of here and, and we're going to do a little mask right here to kind of show an example of what that looks like. I typically like to do this sitting down, but you know, whatever gets you the detail. So I have this nice piece of tape in here already that from our previous mask that I'm just trying to stick to. So the majority of, I mean, I'm going to get a big strip here, but I'm not really super worried about it. Then I'm just going to go 90, about 90 degrees here. I mean, you could fight the tape and try to run that curve, but a lot of times it's just better to just get your angles and then fill. So what I'll do is just only two spots here really, two small spots that uh, the corners. Yep, the little mm -hmm. corners that are lacking mask. And so I'll just and I'm not even gonna be aggressive about this. I'm gonna try to tack it to the tape itself and just a little bit into the corner just to make sure that there's a seal there. I don't have to be super aggressive about um, smashing it all the way down to the surface because really all we're concerned about is the edge of the tape uh, if you don't want any paint blowing out inside of there so for for this purpose um, that's, so that's what's gonna look like so um, just to if you we pull it up so it's square to the camera yeah. or yeah but. again all right bring that so what there. he's if you'll remember there's a strip of tape already in here for that detail work and he's just taped two that piece of tape more or less because that tape is going to give us the curve that we're looking for. Yep. All right, now we're going to shoot out uh, an Oasis Blue on there. <laughs> and uh, be right back. Let's do it. We got our Oasis in there, Oasis Blue. Got the mask all set up. And uh, really, it's time to just do a reveal. So I'm going to start pulling tape off of this and kind of just showing. Um, and we'll see where all of our mistakes end up and things we need to fix, but for the most part, all the base coating is now done. Uh, so this is just, just to get the primary colors on, on the helmet. You'll see that I already, I used the same mask for both cheeks, so we can even pop that off of there. Uh, let's look at our, let's look at our stripe here and see how that turned out. This is where you really find out what things you gotta fix or nothing at all, nothing at all. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Look at that right there. Purple pop through. Let's do this one here.
other side. Good. I don't know, lazy Susan to spin around. But... So that's the start, that's our base. And we'll start airbrushing. So we pulled all these parts off and I did them separately. I think earlier I showed you that I was wrapping this in an aluminum foil. I've got a little bit of detail to work on, but as you can see, you can weather this pretty easily. And now you get a really good glint of metal popping through there. Uh, I probably won't do too much to that. I'll probably just chip it up a little bit. Uh, and we'll fix this in here, and it'll look really sharp once it's once it's all detailed what, up. What color did you paint these ear caps? Uh, these, these ear caps, uh, the ear, ear caps were done in the the lagoon satin, so the same as the dome on the top of the helmet. All right. So um, a step that uh, I take on this is. Um, just to be right off the bat, this color scheme is for like a death watch, you know, Mando build, but these colors are not like, I can't guarantee these colors are the same as the Mando build, uh, but they are definitely within the, the total, you know, colors. Um, like the dome, I kind of, it has like a modeled look in the, like the uh, screenshots and stuff. So what I did is I, I put down that um, lagoon, lagoon, you know, initially. So you had like the tones and then I went back through with uh, the Oasis blue from about well, almost two feet away. And what you're doing is basically, what I did was basically dust it with paint. You're not trying to actually paint it, you know, this color. You're just trying to get a dusting of that color to create uh, a depth, like a depth of, of dirt and grime. So then you end up with this really great transition um, of one color into the other, but you're never getting the full, uh, you know, the full depth of both colors. That kind of creates that new color, a new, a new blue. Um, and so our next, our next step is actually going to be I'm going to actually spray some dirt into this thing uh, with my airbrush here. I've Later. gotten a Iwata Eclipse uh, HPCS. Got this at Hobby Lobby. Uh, great for the 40. Well, I don't know if they let you do the 40% off coupon, but when I got it, I was able to do it. Um, uh, you can also do. Uh, this one was about two hundred dollars uh, when I purchased it about three years ago. Um, there's also the Neo. This is pretty crusty right now, which is a. I think this is about a hundred dollars. The Neo. Both of these are dual action airbrushes, which means when you push your finger down, you get air. When you pull your finger back, you get paint. Um, yeah. Just FYI, we got the air compressor in here, so it start kicking off. So, just FYI. When the air compressor goes off, we'll just narrate over top of it or whatever. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Have fun with that. Uh, so I, I uh, purchased all this paint at Hobby Lobby. Um, it's all in their airbrush section. It's all automotive grade or model grade, depending on what you pick up. This is all just model grade paint um, or you know canvas grade, like what you would paint with. So I'm just big thing of black. Um, I'm starting with a bit of black. And then I'm going to water it down with some brown, and I'm going to try to make some some dirt here. Uh, I may need, even need to uh, dump a little off. Got to be careful with the drippers because they really, it's like you don't need a lot of paint to go really far. So you want to you know, look inside of there in my pot. I think you got to. So I'm going to mix this up and create like a much more natural mud kind of color. Not that these guys are muddy, but oil, grime, that kind of stuff. And if, instead of just shooting straight black, shooting, putting brown and black together helps because sometimes the blacks will lean a little blue. Um, it'll be a little more, a little more blue in the black. Uh, and even on this helmet, even though the helmet's blue, I want to kind of accentuate out some of the redder colors of the nat you know, natural environment around. So let's just start. I like starting like right in the cheeks because it's a crevice where stuff's gonna start to build up.
So kind of a detail I wanted to show while the compressor was going is, you know, I hit my pinky here and I put a little smudge. It's actually the perfect kind of thing you want, kind of detail you want because, you know, as a, you got to thinking about this in real, like in real world terms, your person is taking this on, taking it off. So as I putting in these details, I can come through and kind of mess them up a little bit and it gives it double depth. I'm also trying to make sure that I'm getting all of this dirt down in the in the actual crevices. And when you're when you're shooting the paint out of the brush, you don't want to be like right in there because you're gonna end up with big you're gonna end up with really you know uh, solid dots like that. You know when you're back 12 inches or more, you can get a nice fade out, uh, real natural looking uh, fade out. I think what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna paint this half of the helmet, then we can spin the helmet around and show the difference of each side. Um, because it doesn't, it's not always necessarily apparent the change that actually happens when you're doing this kind of thing. So again, I'm gonna go right into this crease right here on the top. Just start to fade it out into the top of the dome there. And along the bottom edge, I'll, I'll do here, here. All right, the first half, hairbrushed, actually. Try to get it, because the lights are reflecting off the paint. Looks like the burn marks. Threw it on the ground, dropped it on the floor. I got oil on my hands, you know, those kinds of things right, are what you're you looking spin at. Spin it around to the clean yep. side. So you can see the difference. And you can see, like how he was saying, the haze, this the far away spray, you could see how clean it is, how dirty it is. As he's airbrushing it, all those little, sorry, I'm trying to turn it myself here. All this kind of stuff is just blending together. So he's gonna hit the other side here and then we will show you the next step. Uh, so we did that brown and black. It's actually uh, not quite a brown. It's actually a wicked uh, yellow okra. This is a tr like a transparent paint that goes through everything. Uh, if you spray it over white, it kind of is a little more yellow. If you spray it over black, it's more brown. So it's really, really fun color to use for making uh, metallics look tarnished. Is what I'm going to do right here, and just to add another layer of grime to this helmet. So I'm going to sit here and we're going to make this look like it's got a little pluming rust going on it and it itself starting to go and then I'll just start dropping it.
All right, the next color I'm using is this uh, Createx Airbrush Colors Sand. Um, and I'm gonna be shooting this from pretty far away because what I'm gonna make it look like is just, there's a, just a layer of dust or dirt. Even though there's already dirt on this, it's just that next layer of grime that kind of pops out. It's gonna be a much brighter color. Um, you know, it's a sandy color. So I'm gonna start plowing that on there. It's really going to show up like in the cheek area where it's black. Okay, the final step I'm going to take actually is uh, it's kind of a, a small step. Um, you don't have to do it. I like to do it. Uh, once you get it kind of, you know, you get it to your, where your weatheredness you want. Um, I like to come in and I'll take like a scotch bright pad or just some really light sandpaper and try to like hit some spaces to like cut through. So you can kind of get a, um, so what I'm basically doing is going into my dark spaces and creating rub marks essentially and you can do this on all like the edges it'll like end up with good edge highlights uh, i'm not sure if the camera will pick it up but it's like as you do this you end up with some chipping and some just wear uh, that's really what i like to do is just try to make this look like it's not just a fancy perfectly painted movie prop it's not you know it's a used piece of equipment that someone in a universe uses in a galaxy far, far away. So I really like how that, like, is popping some of these missed imperfections in the plastic out. See, I like that right there. I like how that looks. I'm going to go through here and make sure it kind of pulls up some of this dirt. There we go. All right, I would call that done. And it, this can be taken a couple more steps further uh, with metallics that um, you could do if you wanted to. This helmet we're kind of keeping a little less uh, dinged up all the way down to the metal. Uh, it's just more of a decorative piece I don't even know what you want to do with that but um, yeah that's it and all right here is the finished product it looks fantastic in my opinion Mike did an insane job thanks, thanks man. Mike. that's what brothers are for right that's right <laughs> I make the armor and he'll paint it for me yeah. I didn't make this though <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that video um, Thanks again to Mike for painting this for me. Fun showing project. you guys awesome tips and tricks on how to use airbrush. I know our colors, they may not be perfect. They might, may not be screen accurate, but I mean, you can use the same process with the right colors if these are not the right colors. to get something Death Watch looking. And for the price of this helmet and the paint job, you have yourself a fantastic Death Watch helmet using this process. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you like this video, Subscribe, subscribe, like it, comment, do all the fun stuff. Um, I've got my Patreon page if you want to support me and support my channel so I can make cooler stuff like this um, and all that fun stuff. I've got a bunch of other build videos if you're interested in seeing how stuff is made. Um, yeah, sorry for all the background noise during this video. We've got a billion people over right now. My brother, 
my dad, my whole family's here, and it's just impossible to give them the shh quiet while we're trying to get this video, but this is the only time we could do it. So. Stop apologizing. <laughs> Don't want to hear that. Thanks for all your guys' patience. Um, yeah, how awesome is this? Yeah! And oh wait, so I got the helmet, and here are the metal, well, the chest Mike has painted for me on the two-stripe. I, I didn't have it in the last video, so here it is now. Ha! Unplug that. It's an air compressor going. You're going to have to edit that out. No, it'll be all right. <laughs> this is a thigh plate. And the other thigh plate. And we will have the shoulders and the jet pack and everything else here to come. Probably won't be doing those on the build videos because those are going to be 3D printed. Um, but we'll definitely get what I can on video for you guys. I'm like, how oh, awesome is that? I've got a death watch helmet now. <laughs> I'm excited. So stay tuned, guys. We'll have more coming down the road. Thanks again. My name is Matt Schwartz. I'm the Welding Geek. Thanks, Mike. And have a good one. Stay tuned.